I'm Ellen Mary. And I'm Michael Perry. And he's a plant geek. And she's a plant addict. And, and this, this is, is the Plant Based Podcast. podcast. <laughs> This is more than just a gardening podcast. We'll be exploring the world of plants from every possible angle. We'll be talking about plant-based diets, plant materials and fabrics, the well-being qualities of plants, and giving plenty of gardening tips and tricks. So we'll be chatting worldwide to companies and individuals that are being creative with plants in new and exciting ways. From fabulous flower crowns to foliage-filled lounges, botanical moisturizers to bamboo clothing it's all here and it's all made of plants this episode of the plant-based podcast is brought to you by our friends at veggie pod their integrated raised vegetable garden bed kit makes growing vegetables easy for everyone with self-watering features and protective canopy with veggie pod you'll be harvesting your own produce in no time available in three sizes to suit any garden Visit veggiepod.co.uk and enter PBP10 for a special discount as a PBP subscriber. And it was just two. <laughs> and it was like, yeah, I just, for my sanity, I can't do this anymore. Let's so then, just clarify in campsites from there the on. listeners what we're talking about here, <laughs> shall we? <laughs> Michael and I are with the guys of VeggiePod. Hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and that's our interlude talking yeah, about awful places we'd stay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we're also with Baby and Dog as well. Yeah. <laughs> now, how did we know which house was Veggie Pod House? There were Veggie Pod houses, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like welcoming <laughs> window boxes. We were kind of driving along, going, you know, counting the numbers down to your house, and we were like, oh no, there it is. It's just Veggie Pods. <laughs> <laughs> there they are. And not only is there pods, there's parts and random bits and pieces. <laughs> and like is this where we come for spares? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. And I could smell a curry plant. Is there a curry plant growing in any of those yes. veggie pods? In the small one, yes. Yeah, I could smell that. That's really small. Uh, we could smell that from number 39. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a long way away. <laughs> cool. We need some sort of formal intros then. What do we do at like, an AA meeting? <laughs> I've never been to one. So oh, I don't I've seen one EastEnders. <laughs> okay. So introduce yourself. We'll go around the table. Hi, my name's Ellen Mary and I'm one half of the Plant Based Podcast. <laughs> I'm my comparing on the other half, the better half. And then... <laughs> uh, this is Freya. Hi. Yeah. Hey, Freya. The newest member of the Veggie Pod team. Tell us all about you. Does she speak yet? <laughs> she must start old, today. I'm it? five yeah. months old. Five months old. <laughs> <gasps> She's trying. And I think I'm hungry. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Freya's hungry. She's gesticulating heavily. The newest <laughs> member of the Veggie Pod team. Hello. I think that might be hunger. Oh. <laughs> might be something else. Oh, is that the curry plant? <laughs> <laughs> I like it when I've got to change her. <laughs> I've got to change her. Um, ah, okay. I'm, I'm New Ari. I'm... A nappy changer? A nappy Mr. Changer. Veggie Pod. A new father for a little sleep. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. And I'm Alex. I'm the other half of Veggie Pod. There you go. Yeah. Part based podcast meets Veggie Pod. And we're yes. working in association with these guys for series two. So we've popped along um, to meet the guys and sit and chat and have a drink and patio doors are open, the sun is shining. It's a beautiful day. We've showed it? them how to use their coffee machine. <laughs> <laughs> and we've brought the Australian sun with us we too. Did. Yeah. It's there we the go. temperature. Ah, isn't glorious. It? I just, yesterday I was at Hyde Hall and I did think I was going to pass out. It was so hot and there was, I couldn't get cool. And that's, I think that's the difference of being here in Britain compared to somewhere like Australia or overseas where there's aircon. You never seem yeah. to get cool. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You can't yep. escape it. So when it is really, really okay. hot, anywhere else, you know you can jump in the pool or you can go inside where you can cool off. You can't here. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It never gets cool enough when it's hot. People are using air conditioners as a marketing tool at the minute. Are they? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm... Um, I was staying in a little village called God Manchester, which is near Cambridge, and I went for a walk yesterday and like the kind of aviation museum or something in the village, which is like this decrepit little museum, had this handwritten A3 poster saying, we've got air conditioning. It's like, all right. I'm going to go there. I would have been in there. Yesterday. Not interesting, but I want to get caught. Yeah, it's exactly. really brazen. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Shall we talk about plants? Yeah. <laughs> Instead. My veggie pod. Can I talk about it? Yeah, of course. I know we don't want to completely talk about veggie pod. Yeah. Because, you know, we want to chat garden mm. stuff. But I've got one on my allotment, the medium-sized one. And we planted up... Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm going to completely go off here. 
Michael has just done exactly the same thing as he always does when he drinks. Go for it again. What did I do? If you heard any noise in the background, that was Michael. Oh, uh, that's because I'm used to drinking drinks in China. <laughs> you slurp it anyway. I can't even slurp it as loud as Michael slurps it. <laughs> but that's normal in China. No, that wasn't even loud. That's how you can drink really hot drinks. Anyway. Well, I just do it with every drink nowadays. <laughs> Sorry. Michael and I planted that. I need a straw. <laughs> Be even worse. Michael planted his up with plants, flowery plants, begonias, garbinias, something else, can't remember. It was, if truth be petunias. told, a pride container. It looked amazing, but we halved it, and then the other I felt half. Her allotment needed some inclusivity. <laughs> My allotment is as colourful as it comes, and the other half of the veggie pod was uh, edibles. Mm -hmm. And it looked really lovely in photos, but it looked a great way to show how versatile it is. But, um, I replaced them all. I have potted them or planted them out, but I really wanted to use it for salads and stuff because it has the cover, and so I thought mm. that would be better uh -huh. for me on the allotment. Okay, well, I'm about just to so show you know, Neil a picture, and he's about to be. I've impressed. got to say, it looks ace. It looks really yeah. ace. Oh, wow. Yeah, isn't that cool? That is oh, impressive. Amazing. Left hand side looks great, doesn't it, with all those flowers in? Yeah. It but, does. So, right hand See? side, when it's all grown, will look absolutely stunning because there's all different textures and colours and stuff. Rebrand it to a flower pod. There you go, have that one for free. Actually, that's, that's interesting because a lady just came up to me over the weekend and she goes, you know what I did last year? Um, coming to the end of autumn or something, she goes, I didn't want to put any veg in there. I didn't want to go outside in the mm. winter. So I said, so what did you do? She goes, I took a load of cuttings from the garden, yeah. flower cuttings, yeah. and she put them inside and just left them and forgot about oh, it. And she, yeah. yeah, and she kept all the, all the, you know, the flowers that she loves. Yeah. And she goes, I just loved it. He goes, she goes, I completely forgot about it. I went back out in Feb, <coughs> lifted it up. I just goes, you know, about 80% of them had, had taken. I was, I, I was pretty yeah. happy. Best wow. So she yeah. took them all out and she goes, then I put some salad in there and <laughs> carried on. And that, and that was it. And then she wandered off. I was like, can I have your name? And she, <laughs> I was going to chase after her. Can you but, you know. a review? <laughs> <laughs> just take the idea. Yeah. And we also oh. had um, the National Rose <coughs> Society as well, didn't we? Yeah, well, they're, they're thinking about growing mini, miniature roses. Miniature roses. Oh, yeah. Wow. This is cool. like, right, and that, next year, yeah, so not 2020, I'm going to be in America for half of the year, but oh. mainly over the winter time. Mm -hmm. And I've been trying to think of all different ways that I can, I'm, I'm going to keep my allotment, so that's going to run from like March to September, October time anyway. And I've been thinking of ways that I can continue to propagate and store yeah. and keep things going mm -hmm. over the winter time. That is an absolutely amazing idea. And you're not going to rely on Michael to look after the allotment? No. no. <laughs> I wouldn't be there oh, at all. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. No, no, no. Oh. <laughs> it's just hard when you travel. I was thinking the other day, I really like to have an allotment, but it is... It's, it's hard it's a commitment. when you're travelling and... Yeah. It's a commitment, it is a yeah. commitment, but you, you have to... I'm doing no dig, and that actually uh, keeps a lot of the weeds down. Yeah. I'm only... I, I grow so that I only grow between May and October mainly, so mm -hmm. I don't plant out generally for winter veg. I have for this year, because my change will be next year. Yeah. Um, but I will be shutting the allotment down, if you like, September onwards from next year. And is there so, certain things you do? You know, to shut it down, to I will to prepare uh, it in a way. Will have to be cut back so they don't go to seed. Mm. I will probably September's a bit early, but I might get someone to come and layer a, a whole layer of mulch over the top of everything. That will keep help suppress the weeds, and then that will feed the soil for next year. You don't have to do any digging or anything like that. Just lay it on top. Oh, fantastic! The fruit will all get cut back, so mm. it will basically be shut down. The greenhouse will be emptied and cleaned. The veggie pod will be emptied and used for propagation. How about that? That is completely awesome. Yeah, so yeah, nice. it will take a bit of organisation, but I'm going to be back in the UK, kind of March, April till September time. So I want my allotment. So yeah. that's I'm just yeah. going to have to fit it all in and. And mm -hmm. do it. So, but that's an absolutely amazing. Well, I, I loved being on her allotment last week. You were like a child. I had these kind of like euphoric moments. I was like, you know, dancing around like a fool, wasn't well, I? Well, you do that most days. <laughs> <to be fair. laughs> I don't know. You know, sometimes when you just get so excited, and I was just like, wow, this is cool. Because what? I was, you know, like with my job, it's become like it's great, lovely career, but it's not often I'm really outside with the plants. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because mm. you're often maybe speaking at a flower yeah. show and some yeah, sort of TV exactly. or so, and it's really. You could relax. You could finally anymore. relax yeah, and crazy. dig and get dirty I and have fun. I didn't relax though. He I didn't. was just hyperactive, like yeah. a toddler. 
Anyway, let's talk about yeah. Australia. Yes. Yeah. Let's talk about Australia because I'm going there in October. And yeah. I love it. Can I come? <laughs> sure. <laughs> if you like. More the merrier. Um, so you, how long have you been over here in the UK? Um, I got back in July last year. Okay. Um, Alex... You come September. September. Okay. Yeah. I didn't realise you were so fresh. I thought you'd be... So fresh. Because so <laughs> you're originally from Cam- Camby Island, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the backstory is I went travelling with a suitcase, three yeah, months. Right. That was the plan. Yeah. I stayed close to 13, 14 years. Wow. Um, was lucky enough to get a passport, so mm-hmm. dual citizen, yeah, so cool. I can go back and forth. Um, met the lovely, beautiful Alex... Hi, Alex. Hi. <laughs> the better half, you could say. Um, and yeah, came back last year, so I came back first just to sort of get things settled in a way. Yeah. Um, because we had to organise one for Alex to finish work and two for Oshie to come across the dog. Of course, the dog. Did Oshie have to go into quarantine or...? Not this way, not, not coming this way, this way but, but going back. Oh, of course, because of the really co- protected kind yeah. of environment yeah. you've got there. Yeah, biodiversity is a huge thing yeah. in mm-hmm. Australia. Um, and thankfully now they've stopped doing the spray. So when you're used to uh, flying into Australia, whichever, whichever oh, that's right. um, airport, yeah. they would walk through the plane with spray. Oh, uh, yeah. You still, I, they they, they some that. countries, but, yeah. Yeah, they, they don't do it in Australia yeah. anymore, so they have stopped that practice, which is, which is good, because no one ever knew what the hell yeah, they well, were spraying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Make it smell nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you're prefing something in. But, yeah, which, which they've now stopped. So, yeah, basically just over, what are we now? August, yeah, just over a year. Uh-huh. Um... Mm. Our, our first show was actually at the RHS uh, Chelsea Flower Show uh-huh. last year, which we were invited to participate in. You were invited to Chelsea? <laughs> we were invited to Chelsea. <laughs> to educate. <laughs> to educate, yes. On yeah. urban farming. That's, That's right. awesome. So yeah. it, they all started yeah. in Australia then. So yeah. the, the veggie yes. pod concept all began in Australia. And that's why you get an E. Veggie, veggie instead of veg pod. Everyone's like, everyone from Australia is E or O. Yes. Then my husband, like, Web is Webo. <laughs> Webo. Vejo. Vejo. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's, everything's O or an E, so, you know, you've got that, well, it's a silent E normally, but, you know, because it's uh-huh. Australia, veggie yeah. pod. Okay. Um, but, yeah, it started there, what, nine, nine years ago now by, you could mm-hmm. say, like a crazy inventor. Mm-hmm. A normal guy, uh, his name's uh, Matt Board and... Uh, bored of, he was bored of his job, but he was more frustrated in mm-hmm. the garden. Mm-hmm. You know, I think like a lot of people. Just what was totally, his job, by the way? He was, well, he's had a range of jobs, like uh, corporate, oh, so okay. in finance. Okay. Okay. Well, I think his last job was, was in finance. So, but he likes gardening? Likes gardening, a tinkerer, as right. we would say. He just tinkers tinkerer. with things and, <laughs> and sort of makes things. Um, sort of got this, you know, sort of... You know, one of those brains around products. Yeah. You know, and mm-hmm. if something doesn't work, well, how does he fix it? Yeah. That kind of thing. Cool. Um, and yeah, he he yeah was frustrated. You know, normal garden issues, I mm-hmm. suppose. So he um, he started you know mucking around in his back backyard, mm-hmm. and then come up with a very big pod, which is two meters by one in one pod, and tried to sell it. Mm-hmm. And he cool. wondered why he couldn't sell it. Right. Because people were like, well, how am I going to get home? Not many people can put a two metre yeah, yeah, yeah. by one metre pod on top of their car or in their ute. So he, he sold a few. Ute. That's all you like, never hear in England. <laughs> wow. You've got to explain to this what, what a ute is. Yeah. What wow. is a ute? Uh, a ute here would be. Um, it's, like it's an open like a pickup, like a pickup. Like a pickup. Like a pickup. 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 pickup here. Yeah. You have really sporty ones there. Oh, yeah. V8s. Oh yeah. V8s. Is that like a sporty racer? Oh. Is that what that um, is? Sporty, kind of yeah, the V8 ones. Okay. You know, Are the, they cool to have? In Australia. Yes. They are cool. They're yes. Not, like... I don't think English people could imagine a sporty pickup. No. It doesn't make sense, but it's oh my god. Like, but yeah, they're they're, they're, they're quick. Yeah. You know, they're it's it's a tradition to have a U. Uh. Um, yeah, so he was sort of, you know, going back and forth, and then eventually he came up with sort of a modular approach, which is easy to people to transport, um, but still wasn't getting anywhere, really. Um, and then um, he asked his brother and a, a friend of mine to come on board and form sort of Veggie Pod in a way. 
Um, his brother, Paul, was an, a boss of mine at the time. So we, we were working in corporate. So we used to do patient support programs. Right. So patient support programs, so if someone was newly diagnosed with a medical condition, say diabetes, mm-hmm. we would then provide them with nurse support. Okay. So nurses would go to someone's house, educate them on what diabetes is, because some people don't, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then why they've got to take the medication, when they've got to take it, and what are the ramifications if mm-hmm. they don't. So health service can't provide it, like the NHS doesn't have the resources to do it, and then the drug company um, that provides the, the insulin or tablet would pay us to go and provide that service. So we would have a number of nurses, phone support and stuff. So we all worked there as, oh, wow. as a group completely of people. Different. Yeah, completely different. And then, um, so Paul and my friend Simon um, left and formed VeggiePod with, mm-hmm. with Matt. And then um, they were just you know, knocking on doors through Australia, mm-hmm. going to all the garden centres. and a then. Drive. <laughs> well, go, go for go for a two week trip yeah. at a time. Oh, wow. In there, you with those yeah. wow. and Well, it started off with um, just a van and a trailer, uh-huh. just putting veggie pods, right. and literally just going from Sydney That's to Brisbane. Real old school sales, yeah. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. like an old American film, isn't it? Where they just knock on doors. Door. Yeah, it's because yeah. you didn't have the internet. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's very slow there. <laughs> it takes a long time so to get anywhere. A long way away. <laughs> No, what is, which is what we found very different to um, the UK, because the UK is a very established horticultural yeah, country. Yeah, you know, yeah. this is where horticulture started. But there you've got so many different climates. It's like in the US, it's, you don't have like an RHS, things like that. No, you don't really we don't. Have no. And six yeah. months on, six months off. Yeah. Um, and Australia, you know, people look at the garden, they look at a barbecue, yeah. um, a swimming pool, and that's it. Yeah. You know, they won't talk so much about flowers yeah. um, and anything else. You know, a bit of decking, as I say, barbecue, swimming pool, mm. and garden's done. You know, the, the the break came when we went on Shark Tank or, as everyone would know here, Dragon's Den. Do you have that footage? Yes. Wow. Yeah, we can share that with you. Watch that. Yeah. 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 So it's pretty cool. Let's search for it right now. <laughs> uh, and it's, um. Matt, you'll you'll sort of get to hear a bit more about Matt's backstory mm-hmm. and how the veggie pod came to be, and yeah. you know he was a frustrated gardener essentially, and mm. through his tinkering away, he came up with the modular approach that is now veggie pod. Yeah, that's so cool, though. Yeah, so it's a very grassroots company. Yeah. Um, Here they are. Man. Oh, Michael's got it <laughs> up on um, is that oh, the guy? Wow, on is YouTube. Boy, yeah. Someone like me. You can check it out. No, this this is in you know talking about yes, New Zealand. This is New Zealand. Oh. Um, so we've we've been on a couple of TV shows in New Zealand, but I can send you the footage. Yeah, please. Um, cool. Matt's on there, and at the end of the what do you call it? Not session. Um, uh, the episode. Segment episode. Yeah, yeah. Um, segment or whatever. Um, his wife comes out. His young daughter comes out. Oh. Um, this is after sort of handshaking on a on a. An agreement, mm. and that's basically that day or that night. Uh, website crashed, wow. um, and that's when things sort of really took off, off because because you'd actually pricked up Australians' ears to grow in their own, which is quite an achievement, I guess, with everything you said about how they didn't respect the garden and the open space. Well, we don't have allotments in Australia, so yeah. what you do in your backyard is kind of it. Mm. But, but I guess you got more space anyway, generally, or not? Yeah, I, I, I would say so, but, but, but yeah. I think the focus is more on you know the swimming pool and the kind of yeah. entertaining area rather than you your garden. Nice however, that's why. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> Say it nicely, Michael. Look, you've got sunshine yeah, today, true. and I can see but blue sky. I guarantee <laughs> the, the day someone listens <laughs> to this podcast, it'll be dull. <laughs> that's a given, huh? <laughs> Likely. Yeah. 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 Come Likely. on. Agreed. <laughs> Been here another year. Even if this is next July. <laughs> 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 So yeah. this, so he's created this modular system of growing, and then what happened next? So your, your website crashed. Mm. Um, so this is all in Australia. Mm. So when did you know, the business decide to go elsewhere, like here so, in the UK and elsewhere? It's a really good question. So it is a sort of friends and family business in a way, and the next country was um, New Zealand. So a now friend, you can say decking, mm-hmm. in New Zealand. decking, <laughs> dicking, dicking, dicking in New Zealand, <laughs> and then um, again an ex colleague, <laughs> an ex colleague over there said, "I love it. Can I, you know, let me take a few mm-hmm. to uh, New Zealand and see how they go?" 
and they went well. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, you know, we're starting to sell in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we went to the US. Matt went to the US, so he moved his family across the US. To, um, what, to sell that? To, to sell veggie pods, to set up veggie pod yeah. US, Real USA, so and so forth. Really cool. um, and then it sort of, sort of, you know, ha- added, people have added on from there. So family and friends have sort of said, you know, mm-hmm. can so now, I... Now you've gone from all working together to all being in completely to, different countries. Yeah, and we we barely talk to each other now, you know, it's, <laughs> which is good in a way. They'll probably you're hear this, which is great. Market. Yes. Yeah. So then, um, so I was still doing corporate because I was like, you guys, are, you guys are nuts, you know. We've all got good jobs here. You guys are nuts. Are nuts Why leaving the corporate that? life, you know. We're, you know, we're working well. We've got a good, good thing going on here, you know. Yeah. Our customers like us, you know, patients, you know, like what we're doing. We get good feedback. So I was like, good luck to you all. You know, I'll, I'll carry on sitting in my chair while you're driving around Australia, sleeping in the van and stuff. And then um, they asked... Then me and Alex over a swim at six thirty in the morning. Over so a swim. over a, over <laughs> a, is that how business happens? In yeah, climate. Yeah, they went. Yeah. Let's can we, we do it in cold Costa coffees over here. <laughs> <laughs> on the motorway. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> With a soggy sandwich, <laughs> a meal deal. <laughs> Learn all about them. Yeah. Um, and literally, yeah, um, I had a swim, and they said, you know, would you be interested in going back to England? Because they said, well, you're from England, so you'd know all about England. Mm-hmm. Um, how misinformed they were. <laughs> how misinformed I was. And then um, I, I assumed Alex would, wouldn't be interested, you know, because Alex is Australian, her family's there. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we, yeah. we had a good life, you so to speak, and, you know, why it was sort of rocket. And it's a long way, whatever way yeah. you know, it's yeah. a long way, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, we... It was a great thing, you know, what they were doing is a cool product, um, it's a good opportunity, and... It's not many times in your life when you get an opportunity presented to you that you can do something completely left field, mm. almost well, be yeah. in charge of your own destiny, yeah. and... Neil, were you working in the industry or not? Or? Not at all, no. no. I, um, I ran a marketing team for a oh. telecommunications oh, company. Oh, but then you bring the marketing skills yes. to this project, which yeah. is great. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did you both love gardening yeah. before you started? Okay, no. Uh, but do you now? I bet he thought it was a match. Well, well <laughs> our, our lifestyles in Australia didn't really permit it. I mean, yeah. we lived in the inner city. We had, you know, we didn't even have any outdoor space. Yeah. So I guess whilst we love, you know, wide open spaces and parks yeah. and beautiful gardens, mm. we just didn't really... Garden yourself. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Okay. But Just Whoa. before we finish up, because this has been an ace chat, I think we should give listeners a little bit of an idea about the veggie pod. So can you just tell us a, a little bit about it, its function, how you use it, the sizes, that kind of thing? Okay. So, so yeah, just briefly, it's um, a fully contained self-watering um, pod um, with a protective cover that keeps out insects, animals, climate, yeah. um, keeps oh, the climate you in. you really corporate. <laughs> Have I? Yeah. All yeah. oh, right. You're sitting upright. You're all yeah. Leaning in. <laughs> Don't worry. It's nice. <laughs> um, with an irrigation system, laying back, relaxing. Um, yeah, three different sizes: small, medium, large. Um, and they can sit on the floor because there's no weeding coming in. Yeah. Um, you put them on a stand. You know, so the elderly are, are in particular really enjoying the stands. Mm-hmm. And we've even got trolleys. So if people do have uh, decking or a, a wasted area in a way, but they still need that area for family, mm-hmm. friends, What's whatever. You can, you can, you've got a trolley, you can move it in and out. Um, <gasps> and and people are really enjoying that, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been so, yeah. watching photographs on Instagram of people growing in their veggie pods. And there's some mm. really remarkable mm. stuff coming out of those. I've seen some huge onions. They mm. work. Wow. You know, the, mm. you know we, we, we're, we're not gardeners, as we now know. Um, and it literally has put some... Pl- Good soil, good compost. Yeah. Put in some seeds or some plants. Mm-hmm. Um, good water. Close the lid and sort of forget about it. And let it do its so thing. So the lid stays on all season. When does the lid yeah. then come on? It stays on all season. Yeah. Yeah. So they get enough light. They're obviously yeah. protected from the insects and the different, you know, troubles also, that you can it, have. And also, like, from the, like the, cool. the blazing sunshine as well. Yeah. So they get shade, but they get sun. Yes. Yeah. It keeps yeah. the pests out, and also, obviously, if they're raised, that can keep a lot of pests uh-huh. out anyway. But how does the self watering system work? Does so it's, like it's literally just your, just your mains. So your normal normal hose, connect it. So you've all everyone's got the adapter already, mm-hmm. um, universal adapter, connected on, turn it on. You've got a misting system. 
inside. So perfect in a way for seeds. Uh-huh. So propagation, um, people have been using that. It doesn't sort of um, flood the, um, the, the soil. Yeah. So great for seeds and, and obviously you need to do it more regularly. Yeah. And then when the seeds sort of start to take and, and the plant starts to grow, the roots will then start to drink up from the reservoir underneath. Right. So that's how it just looks after itself. Really cool. Someone said that they'd left it for nearly three months. I can't remember who told me this, but and they'd left it for just under three months, and it was, everything was completely fine. It's pretty common. Yep. That's amazing. Yep. Can you like? Uh, that's incredible, isn't it? And that's water saving. That's super important at the moment. As yeah, well. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a very um, low maintenance way to grow veg, yeah. and I think what people find so appealing about it is that it's, it doesn't just work but it grows quite quickly yeah mm-hmm. so you know you'll be harvesting sort of lettuce within two three four weeks yeah. you know depending and on the earlier conditions. in the season mm. and later Absolutely. in the season as well yeah the thing which we don't we've not really spoke about is what we enjoy about you know the education part mm-hmm. yeah. you know one is we're learning um and i'm thinking of enrolling even into a course mm-hmm. to know okay to know about vegetables mm-hmm. um, so they don't go to flour and things like that <laughs> which yeah. a lot of customers have told me over the last few weeks yeah. that that's gone to flour you've got to do this so yeah. one is I'm going to educate myself but two um, is when we go into school so some of the cool stuff yeah. we do is the veggie pods can be built by everyone from a five year old uh-huh. upwards so mine I go to school mine, so I agree yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is he listening <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I go to a school and literally get the kids to do all the building. So they build them all, then they put all the soil in, then they put all the plants in. So it's a teamwork really cool. session. Yeah. Yeah. It's a teamwork session. You should speak to RHS for schools. They probably do a nice project on that, wouldn't they? Yeah. We just put that out there. Write that oh, one yeah. down. All right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Free of charge. <laughs> super cool. That's really cool. Wow. It's been so good to chat with you. Yeah, but I think i got a little game we should play before we sign Have off. Have you? What do you reckon? I dread to see. I want to know from these guys, I want to know three things they love about moving to the UK and three things they miss about Australia. Okay. Three things you love. Ladies first. Yeah. yeah. Three each. No, they oh, between, between, between you, between yeah. You. You're a team. Things I love about the UK. Yeah. Don't think too In well. no particular <laughs> order. Um, drivers over here... Everyone's have, staring at have, you now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, when you're on the roads over here... I'm drivers interested. Drivers have so much more etiquette than in Australia. They are really? so much more polite. Yes, you absolutely. You have not seen Ellen drive. <laughs> He actually just told me I was a good driver. No, I didn't. (laughs) That's really surprising. You drive, Michael? Uh, Not very often. (laughs) But when I do, I get two speeding tickets on one piece of road. (laughs) I'm over it. On the same camera. On the the way to my house. (laughs) Technically your fault. I'll expect it to you. Okay. Um, Interesting. I think fashion in the UK, yes, absolutely. Great stuff. Mm -hmm. Loving it. Of course, I've had food. Mm -hmm. Roast dinner. Uh, roast a dinner. roast dinner. Roast dinner. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's one thing that I missed in wow. in Australia was a good roast dinner on a Sunday. Good. And and Sunday's more of a relaxed day here with yes. shops closing earlier, uh-huh. opening later. Yeah. You can actually, you know, theoretically, uh, wow. relax a bit more on a Sunday than you can in Australia. Wow. And what do you miss then? Weather. 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 <laughs> Oh, well, I'm sorry about the weather on behalf of Ellen and all our listeners. <laughs> it's been so nice to chat with you. And thank you so much as well for working with us on Series 2. We're mm. really thrilled to be working with you. It's just so lovely. Thanks for visiting. Super it's cool. really it's good a joy. Night. Where's the dog? He's here. I'm going to see the dog. And Ellen is hugging her endlessly. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where we might finish. <laughs> I, might, I might take her home with me. <laughs> oh, she's so wet. <laughs> doesn't want to be licked over. I'm not sure if we're signing off the podcast at this point or not. I don't know where the button is. This episode of the Plant Based Podcast is brought to you by our friends at VeggiePod. Their integrated raised vegetable garden bed kit makes growing vegetables easy for everyone. As per usual, I'm just going to set the scene for you here. I am currently sitting at Manly Wharf in Sydney, Australia, 
and the beautiful crystal very clear blue water is lapping up against the shore we can see oysters and very posh boats and there are birds chirping in the trees all around and the temperature is absolutely perfect because it's spring here right now and i'm with simon from VeggiePod and you will all know that VeggiePod of course work in association with the plant-based podcast. So hi Simon. G'day, how are you? I'm very good, thank you very <laughs> much. Great. Now I have to be completely honest with you all, I did not bring my usual podcast equipment so I am using my iPhone which you know is pretty good to be fair and I'm moving it back and forth so if there are any sound issues I apologize in advance but I'm sure it'll be fine because it's beautifully quiet and calm here isn't it there's no wind right. a really gentle breeze and you put the beer down as well haven't you uh, we've had a beer already because apparently Aussie business meetings include beer on the wharf overlooking the water and I won't be complaining about that anytime soon. Oh and behind I've just noticed we've got Strelitzia, so bird of paradise, which grow a little bit like weeds here in Australia. <laughs> but they are so beautiful. <laughs> anyway, so Simon Hi. Hello. <laughs> I Hello. loved I loved how Simon met me at the wharf. He literally bounced up. Uh, with the t-shirt veggie pod grow your food on the front and that's just what you can do in a veggie pod isn't it that's it it's become our new tagline if you like it's it's simple and it's directive and that everybody and anywhere doesn't matter what walk of life where you live in the world what you're doing you can grow your food yeah. now and that's a really important message actually to put out there, isn't it? I think lots of people think there are barriers to growing your own food, but with the veggie pot there are no barriers because it can go anywhere and there's loads of different sizes as well. So you can fit it in wherever you want. That's it. But more importantly, let's go back to the beginning. How, like, where did your enjoyment of gardening or growing your own food come from in the first place? Uh, personally, mine, well, I come from a family of the, the Holloways came out f from Britain uh, in the mid-1800s. And then Hold they, on, I have to ask the cliche question. Yeah. When they came out here, what yeah. do you mean they came out? Did they just, like, jump on a boat and decide are, to come out? Are you out? asking, are we a family oh, of convicts? Oh, were you <laughs> naughty convicts? No, no that, that's, a, uh, that's a badge of honour here these <laughs> days, but I can't claim that. No, they were, they were just uh, people who wanted to get out of... Britain for one reason or another, I don't know the actual reasons, but became banana farmers in uh, the north coast of New South Wales, so I come from a family of um, uh, crop growers, and um, yeah, that was, and then my father and, and mother always had vegetable gardens wherever we lived, um, they were both school teachers, and wherever we moved we had vegetable gardens, and that uh, instilled a love for it all. That's cool. I don't think that there is one person who we have spoken to on the podcast yet who did not have some kind of interest or involvement in gardening as a kid. Yeah. Honestly, like even those who have um, not maybe gone straight into horticulture, but yeah. then gone off and done some other career yeah. and then come back to it later, almost everybody says that they can remember gardening as a child in some yeah. way. Yeah, I think, well, it's instilled from the young age. You, you cannot get away from it then. And, and indeed, that's one of the reasons why we've done a lot of focus over the years on the uh, on the schools and the preschools because you know not everybody has come from a background of growing and um, you know if we can get out there and disrupt the normal living and have kids that, that aren't used to it growing again then you know hopefully when they come to adults I'll also say hey that was a great yeah. influence as well let's get everybody growing absolutely so just tell us a little bit about how veggie pod started in the yeah. first place then well you talked about the the barriers to growing before and indeed that's where veggie pod came from matt the inventor our, my business partner and the and the originator of it all he wasn't from the country he didn't come from a parents of, of growing but he formed an interest in it for one reason or another but kept failing and we are so happy that he went through that awful experience. <laughs> so happy that he failed. Yes, exactly. Well, that's what it was born. Like many good inventions, it was born out of failure, you know. And and it didn't matter what it was. Like he sometimes he was overwatering, sometimes he was underwatering. Uh, then he'd have uh, cop the pests, or then he didn't know how to handle all the inclement weather, or he was getting a sore back from bending over. So he put all these things together, the clever bugger, and came up with the veggie pod. And it hit all those pain points that, as experienced gardens, we know hurt, 
but also for the newbie gardeners that, that don't even know that those problems exist. Yeah. It solves that for them. And so we've really come up with the one, all-in-one uh, garden bed, if you like, that solves all those problems and gets everybody growing easily and readily. You know what? I've got one on my allotment. Yeah. No, I have... Uh, it's like half a size allotment. Do you have allotments in Australia? We have community gardens, but not allotments like you have. We have the whole community gets in, but we don't have our individual plots. Okay, so I have my individual plot. Yep. It's not so big. It's kind of half the size of a normal allotment. Yep. Um, but I can pack a lot of stuff in that plot. Mm. And I thought, when I get my veggie pod, you know, what actually is it going to give me that's extra? Do you know what I mean? What am I going to get that's extra from that? But actually, you get a whole lot because you can extend the season with the protection also Mm. as well and obviously like the watering system too. And whilst I'm here in Australia, I've got friends who are going down my allotment and harvesting salad leaves still now. And we're in October, you know, and they're still growing and there's some chilies and um, some edible flowers and stuff in there too. So you could do loads with it. That's it. And and like you say, you're away at the moment. You're gallivanting around here in Australia. I am gallivanting. At the moment, drinking beers in the sun (laughs) under a so-called business arrangement. But they like, when you go away, whether that's for work or for fun or you know for short periods or indeed long periods again the beauty of our veggie pod is that it will sustain your plants so you have the self-watering reservoirs below you know your your plants are protected from above it creates that microclimate it really does uh, engender a long period of growing without you having to always be over the top of it i mean some people even putting timers on their veggie pods because we have the mist sprays in there and we, we've, we've got these fly in fly out miners here in australia that are using them a lot because they go away for three four weeks at a time and we're talking out in the hot deserts and they're still getting all their veggies growing whilst they're away so that's that's a nice thing and it's reassuring to know yeah. that your plants aren't going to die when you're away that's pretty cool no i agree with that because yeah. you know i left everything out on the allotment you kind of like it's exposed to the elements will it rain won't it rain i've got pumpkins growing and brassicas and stuff like that it's like you know it's fine if it has a bit of a rain but if it doesn't it's going to be a real problem as it so happens we've had buckets of rain and it's probably more flooded than anything else (laughs) but the veggie pod however will be fine (laughs) so um just you're really interested in getting people into growing their own and understanding the well-being benefits of that as well aren't you so like the social and therapeutic horticulture side of it so tell us what you do with regards to that well um it kind of just came out of our original corporate social responsibility in a way we we um I mean, you know, mankind has known for, for, for millennia that it feels good when you're gardening. We know it, but it's never been really put too much into a structured or a, or a um, specific uh, education around it. So that's just starting to form. But we, um, we were getting all these unsolicited sales into community mobs such as schools and preschools and prisons and hospitals and aged care facilities and disability hubs. And we started realising, look, there's something going on here when we have a donation to do or we've got a bit of time to do an install rather than just giving away veggie pods willy-nilly to, to surf life saving clubs or whatever else. We yeah. said, let's actually give it to a mob that it can count for. And so we then started looking at these groups. Then when we did that, we we're getting more and more involved with watching what was going on. But we wanted a bit more academic rigour around it, so we started looking into that. We then became members of Therapeutic Horticulture Australia, and it just really grew out of there. And then about 18 months ago, it it came to be that there was a formal collaboration between ourselves, industry, uh, the federal government, so you've got government, and then academia, the Southern Cross University, where we all came together and created these suite of community programs, which we give out free, mind you. It's, it's not a money-making venture for us. But whenever these uh, veggie pods or indeed any other garden goes into these um, community organisations, we have a nice structured program to help those because not everybody's experienced at it, but they want to get stuck into it. It allows them to know what they can do as a suite of activities from, you know, decision-making through to assembling a, a veggie pod through to planting out through to growing, through what we're going to do with the harvest, such as giving back to the community or whatever it is, we did all these programs that go into the pods, into these communities, and they start uh, flourishing in so many good ways. And and it's such 
a joy, if for nothing else, just to be part of all that. Yeah, that sounds amazing. I think in the UK, we need so much more of that, you know? Yeah. We really do. So you've actually got a governing body here in Australia, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's one, of the, one of the very rare occasions where Australia's <laughs> ahead of its times. But, um, <laughs> yeah, we have, a, we have a national governing body here, and, it, and it, uh, we have state bodies as well. So, um, and we all come together once a year. We get guest speakers. We've had several from the UK, in fact, um, and a Creswell there from Higher Ground with the return serviceman. She did a great speech there three years ago, I recall. Um, but yeah, it brings us all together and we share our experiences because it's very much still in the, the infancy, if you like, in terms of an industry or in terms of a, a body or a movement. And um, we all get together and share these experiences and it's, it's, um, it's just a lovely thing to see because at the end of the day, it's about the gardeners. We don't call them the patients or the students or the uh, aged care uh, uh, clients, they're all gardeners. And it, and it's, it just, it, it, it emboldens us to keep doing what we're doing because it's, it's such a feel good thing. Interesting that you say about the word gardener. Some, like in the past, in the UK, actually saying you're a gardener hasn't been respected so much, mm. but it really is so much more now. Yes. And if people ask me what I do, you know, obviously like I kind of promote the wellbeing benefits of gardening, yeah. but at the core, it's, I'm a gardener. Yes. That's what I am. Yeah. Anyone can be a gardener. Yes. Anyone, everywhere, you can be a gardener. Well, it doesn't it. matter. Yep. You know. Yep, indeed. And, and it doesn't matter, you know, young, old, uh, rich, poor, city, country, in, you know, everyone and everywhere can get in touch with nature somehow. And yeah. we, we'd like to think we're helping that out in, in, in certain ways. Um, and it's kind of strange, isn't it, that, that to be a gardener almost, like people look at us as a, a specialist guru, you know, these days. But, you know, whereas even just two or three generations ago, everyone grew for subsistence reasons, yeah. right? You had to have your veggie pats to keep your vegetables going, to, yeah. to, to keep your family surviving. But it's kind of skipped a couple of generations. And if we can bring everybody back and, and debunk that it's all that hard and that there's all these... Uh, mystical stuff to it which you know there is as well but you know if we're here to make gardening easier and, and approachable to everybody i think um you know both the likes of yourselves and ourselves are, are doing a, a noble job cool a noble job yes we are we are the nobility can you tell me the best australian word that i can try to say a good all-round one yeah yeah or what well like ripper Ripper? It's a ripper. It's a ripper. It's something good, right? <laughs> yes. you got Gar a ripper. Well, gardening is ripper? Yeah, it's a ripper job, isn't it? It's a ripper yeah. job if you're a gardening. If you're a gardener, you're a ripper. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> There's plenty of Aussie slang here. I think, but, uh, yeah. Um... Tell us about where you're exhibiting, because like you do all of the shows, and I've seen yes. Neil um, at so many in the UK. Yeah. But you do them all over the world, don't you? Me so too. kind of where do you show your oh, stuff? Oh gosh, I mean we're in 11 countries now. So um, you know Australia, New Zealand, USA, Canada, uh, UK, Ireland, Singapore, Philippines, Dubai, South Africa. I'm probably missing one, Mauritius, I think. So. We're out and about, and, and shows are a huge part of what we do. It gets in touch with people. Um, people want to see and touch and feel and kick and pull and whatever else with the veggie pods, so we get out there. But those shows can be anything. I, like, well, I urge your listeners to go to the respective websites in their home countries. Uh, we have a page on those sites to say where we're exhibiting, but they'll be home and garden shows to your more traditional flower shows such as Chelsea or the Melbourne International Flower Show or Philadelphia Flower Show to trade shows if any of your listeners are garden centre owners or working in the trade we do those ones as well through to the therapeutic shows which we, we just talked about um, to even stuff like the vegan festivals and the Christmas gift shows like we we are like the bearded ladies going from circus to circus. So we're out and about. If we look a bit strung out, please give us a break. But, you know, we love it. We get out there. So I know that they sleep in the van. So I know Paul yes. Neil has to sleep in the van. Good. He, saving he, money. Ah, because he goes all around at all of the shows saving money. Yeah. That's brilliant. And actually, the day I land, so I'm going from Sydney to Dubai and then Dubai back to London. And the day I land, I'm doing a talk at VegFest okay. at um, London Olympia. Yep. And I know you guys are there. We so I'll pop along and see you there as well. Please do. 
Thank you so much. Thank you very much for the beer as well. Yeah, there's another one coming. Yeah, hang on. I think we deserve another beer because we've done the podcast. Hold on a minute. All of like, um, yeah, 15 minutes deserves a beer, right? Thanks for having me. Um, thank you so much for working with us oh. on the podcast as well. We really appreciate it. And we're looking forward to working with you going forward too. I'm just going to say that it's really difficult, to be honest, to concentrate on this because it's just beautiful water and the sand and I just want to go for a swim and <laughs> apparently next time I'm out in Australia I'm going to go and learn how to surf at where Kitty's Bay K- Kitty's Corner Kitty's Corner yeah. because clearly I'm going to be in the water more than That's I will right. be on a surfboard but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know <laughs> hopefully I can stand up for at least a second um, but guys seriously Veggie Pod thank you so much it's an amazing idea thank and um, I love mine very much um, I'm going to show you a picture when I start recording yep. of um, our my friend Barney, right. who's taken his mum down to the allotment yep. and um, and been harvesting some chard and some lettuce leaves and all sorts from the veggie pods. Yep. So. They work, don't they? That's the main thing. At the end of the day, they work. They do work. So that's brilliant. Thank you so much. Not at all. Pleasure. Thank We're you. off for a bit. Bye. Let's go. It's a ripper. <laughs> Today's podcast partner is Veggie Pod, the integrated all-in-one garden bed suitable for anyone interested in growing your own. You'll be amazed at how quickly your vegetables grow in a veggie pod. And as a special offer for our listeners, veggie pod are offering PBP subscribers 10% off any sized veggie pod when purchased with a stand or a trolley. Simply go to veggiepod.co.uk and enter PBP10 on checkout. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Plant Based Podcast. Have a browse of the rest of the library or hop on over to the website, which is theplantbasedpodcast.net. You'll also find our social media links. Please connect with us and let us know about any plant-based projects that you think we should be covering on the show. And make sure you subscribe to our podcast so you'll be the first to hear the next episode. We're releasing once a fortnight. So until next time, enjoy the world of plants.